Hey guys, this is Game of Cowboy to another Total Lost Branch of Legend playthrough. I don't know what to do with today's thing. Uh, this might not actually work because uh, this is going to be very difficult. But I'm going to take my favorite slash best shot in with Marissa A. And we're going to take on Lunatic. I have only actually played Lunatic once. It was with Marissa A here as you can see with the clear. And I did manage it, but I feel like I got a really good deck with that, so no frills on this one. We're just going to go in straight with Lunatic as is, and we're going to see if I can manage it. This is, of course, the highest difficulty that we can play in this game at the moment, outside of taking the quests and stuff to uh, completely disadvantage oneself. And we're just going to go straight in with the upgrade, since we're getting off of that here. We're going to go in with a crap potion immediately, and I think we need to take the life, because the last time I remember doing this, uh, well, the elite stuff kind of messed me up a lot. I have not actually fought everybody within this, right? Because I've only played Lunatic once, so there is a very realistic chance that I just get absolutely destroyed by elites and bosses I have not fought yet. So... Here's hoping that doesn't happen. Alright, straight in with the Sunflower Fairy, we're just going to go in with this. You'll find that apart the HP has gone up a bit more, but you'll find that most of the enemies don't actually do more damage than what they did on hard, but they do have big, bigger effects, and like HP and stuff is obviously pretty rough too. So the last card we have in deck is the Craft Potion, so I feel like we should probably just use that here. Get more damage output at the very least. Um, not much else to really say with it, just get our shots and this. I could do an extra 10 with the occult, but I kind of want to use that on a turn where I need to like, yeah, use more defense. I will not be able to block all the damage this turn, so I'm just not getting to do anything great, which is whatever. Yeah, this is the thing, is like, some hands are just not going to give you the the ability to like play properly, so... Uh, that's why I, I, I like... I'm kind of whatever when it comes to some of the higher difficulty stuff, because it feels like you just can't defend against everything as you want to. We only took three, whereas we'd have taken one damage on normal, but that's still more than I would like. Uh, gonna take Satellite Illusion here. I don't normally take this card anymore, but it is a really good one. Being able to do Scry stuff is great. I can't. Not on Lunatic. Uh, T-shirt, like, immediately is very cool, but putting two lock on on yourself on Lunatic when you already take more damage from everything, like this would do 13? I don't think that's something we can feasibly... Uh, survive here, so not a chance. As you can see, the birds here have got two greys each now, so we have to do additional work to uh, deal with that. So I'm actually going to use the Occult first here, even though this isn't going to do damage. I'm going to, apart from get the Astrology for next turn, technically we could potentially get into our potion and do some damage here. Uh, that might be reasonable, but I think I'll wait until next turn for that. The reason to use uh, any attack on them there is because it gets rid of one of their greys and then the greys goes away at the end of the turn as well. So they, it's down to one point here now. He's going to put another two on himself after this which is really annoying. But the idea now is that I can laser and take out this one. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, we have just enough mana for craft pot actually so that seems pretty good. Let's go ahead and do that. And we do get through, which is nice, because this can now just about finish off. Not quite, but that's okay, because we should have enough attacks next turn to deal with this thing. Hopefully. Uh, we'll see if we can Astrology into one. We do. Okay, so we go Newspaper. Doesn't really matter which one next, just make sure that there's the mana three, so yeah. Alright, not too bad, not too bad. We really need potion stuff. I mean, I used Magic Converter last time and it was fine, but I only really used it because Yomu gave it to me. So we'll take the block. Again, getting more astrology stuff is pretty solid, and we can immediately upgrade that too. 17 block is super, super good to have around. 
Who do I want to fight is the thing. Um, honestly, Marissa can kind of work with any of the colors. I'm going to take on Sakio, I think, because Twofold Chemical or Cooling Agent, both of those are really good, and that's what Sakio's colors will give. So I think it is just overall the best bet, but honestly, any of them are viable. So yeah. We're going to see what the elites are like after this. I'm not super confident right now within the the setup that we have, but I guess we'll we'll do what we can. Uh, yeah, for some reason these have got a different turn timer on them. That's kind of weird. Uh, Alright, so we are taking 14. I've not really got a lot of uh, good stuff to go with here. Let's just see. Can we, Yeah, we could get that for damage. So that seems okay. Uh, let's do that then. We will hit you. I could take it out this turn. Is that reasonable though? Because I won't be able to defend as well. I, I think I could scry into one of the blocks. Okay, let, let's work this out real quick. Because we're taking 14 otherwise, which we can defend against. Exploding that thing will make us take 6. But so it totals to 20 damage, which if I use the scry and the occult, I can take it out and still block everything. It means we don't have frail put on us, which could be pretty bad next turn. I think that's reasonable enough, and we have crackpot for next turn, so sure, let's do that then. It's annoying that it's one short, but you know, that's playing on Lunatic instead of playing on the lower difficulty, right? <laughs> yeah, just enough health to make that a pain. And yeah, we don't take damage, which is good. We're only taking six this turn, which seems pretty reasonable. Let's just get the crap potion in. Fifteen on you, okay. Uh, wow, that's all of my defense, huh? That feels a bit rough, not gonna lie. Um... Hmm. I think we'll probably still be okay, but that's a little scary. Alright, so now weaken and 10 is the thing. Um, that seems reasonable enough. We are one damage short of taking this thing out. So probably what is best then is to just do this. So we'll take our vulnerable, that is whatever. I'm not going to use the scry here because it'll just draw a random card, although I guess I should because I'm getting another one. We'll see what we can get off of this. It's a shoot, okay. Can we get the... do we even want the second one? Probably not. Let's just do this to get it down to one so that any attack will work. And now I just need to defend and attack at the same time, which we hack here. So, yeah, that's better. Because that way I don't take damage from the revenge bullet stuff, because uh, I would have taken nine before. Product to failure, really good. This does upgrade to give two shadows, but it pitting three potions, far too good. One of the best skills that we could get, so super happy with that. Uh, we're going to get a trash card here, but we do get a random exhibit, which is pretty good. So let's see. It is the Mighty Shaku. Drop more power from enemies. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> Harris is shut <laughs> Uh, it's fine. It's not the greatest thing out there, but it's certainly passable enough. And if we get, hopefully we can get the Yomu's uh, thing and we can upgrade that and it'll just be fantastic. Let's go ahead and upgrade Product to Failure. Getting three potions in the deck is just amazing. And here's our first Elite. It is Rin. Okay, so the one I have not fought yet. So let's see what she does. She summons... Uh, she can revive three Vengeful Spirits. One is added every two turns. Okay. Uh, so that doesn't seem too different from normal immediately. She doesn't start with the Spirits, which is good. Let's just see what we can do within this. Ah, uh, get a lot of potions. Yeah, we might just be able to do so much damage that it doesn't really matter here at the start. That would be perfect, right? Uh, yeah. That is an awful lot of damage on turn one. Fantastic. Uh, let's just go there. And then I guess the only question is, do I want 
Orthodox Rebellion, do I want another Astrology available? I'm gonna say no for now. Let's exile that, just so it's not in the deck for later, and we'll go with this. So I already took out 60 health, which is good, but look how powerful these are. And yeah, of course it's random where it's gonna target, so... Yeah, we have 8 damage, 6 damage, 8 damage, explode this one. Thankfully, this one is the one that's doing the least, but that's still 12. So the damage we're taking this turn, all else being equal, is ridiculous, actually. It's 14, 22, and 34. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty dumb. Uh, I have one block is the last thing here. So what we could potentially do... Uh, it's gonna take even more damage, but if I kill this one, then she will explode this one because it's got the lowest health, so we'll take 16 from the explosion there. So this will be 6 plus the... Uh, so it's like 12, 20, 36, but it gets rid of one of them, which is probably as good as it's gonna get. So I can block 20 if I scry for the other other thing. It doesn't look good no matter what you, you go for here, you know? That's the that's the catch. I'm thinking whether or not I need to use the occult here as well, because I could just use laser to take this one out, and then occult to so I can do an extra 14 here. Alternative? What's the alternative here? If I do Satellite Illusion plus Illusion Laser, that's 24. So then I just need to find 24 next turn. Taking still a lot of damage, but that's ah, probably for the best. Okay, let's, let's start making some moves then. So we'll do there. We will scry to grab this. So we'll defend as much as we can and then just hopefully take her out next turn. It's probably the best bet. It's still an awful lot of damage, but I mean... It's not the worst. We took like, what, 14 there? Oh, not able to take her out though. Okay, so we're taking 20. We can block that, which is fine. Uh, feels bad though. Let's make sure one of the red mana gets used here in case I can get crap potion. Uh, I can't. Okay. Uh, probably just remove all of these then. Right. So we're taking another three, but this means I should be able to take her out next turn is what I'm getting out of this. Okay, this could have gone a lot worse. Assuming that we win this turn, which... Bold assumption right now. Um, no, it's probably fine. Craft Potion... Uh, didn't get her, but we do get the last card. Yeah, so we're fine. Whew. That could have been worse. I think if I played more defensively, it would have been worse. Just a knife is intriguing to get here. It means that our basic cards do get a little bit better. Maybe we actually take Romelia if we get her in that too. Uh, borrow material. Oh, it's this is a tough one to go between. Borrow materials is really, really good for just making sure we have enough mana and stuff around, but it's so hard to pass up Full Moon Howl. That said, I think I actually will, because Borrow materials is probably the next upgrade target, unless I get something slightly better, and it just gives you so much more material to work with. We're missing the Inchlings Ball in this one, that's fine. Gain maximum life if you skip a card. Eh. I think it could be, could be better anyway, so... Let's just keep on going, and we will go ahead and fight here. So, so far 20 health loss, not the absolute worst we could have. Still a little bit sketch, but not too bad. You can see the annoyance here, these are actually now healthy enough where they survive two potions. Also, they start with two greys, so yeah, clearly an issue there as well. Let's go for the full shebang with this turn, though. We're going to go with that. We are going to Occult, and we are going to Craft Pot. Get as many of these available as possible. Didn't actually get anything off of it, but that's fine. We have four potions in deck. I don't think I really want to go any further into the deck this turn, so let's just full, full send the defense here, and we'll just leave it at that. We'll get our place for next turn. 
and they give three lock-ons. So yeah, six by two and eleven, that's fine. We can handle that. So from here then, we can take out at least one of these, but we have the scope to potentially take out both. Let's take out this one with our base shots here, because that's good enough damage. Did seven, which because of just a knife, so that's fine. And now we can use one of our mini scries to get into the potions and see where we go from there. Just about take him out. Uh, that's good, but we do kind of need uh, damage for the other guy, which we do have now. So this one's more threatening, so we definitely take him out regardless, because he's the one who's going to do damage to us. And then from there, he's on four, so this will be good enough. This is looking to be a promising deck at the moment, but we do need a little bit more, like, you know, boost for our potions. Improvisation's probably fine. We're not in burst at the moment, though, so, like, impatience is probably good, too. I want to say improv is, improv is decent, though. Is it worth having right now, though. Because mm. it is a bit expensive. Ah, we'll take it. I think it's fine. Having having some card draw like that is good. Alright, the usual bit here, we'll just take our money. The events don't change as you go to a higher difficulty, so there's no, you know, like, changes based on how I normally play, so that's fine. We will go upgrade the borrow materials, because now it only overdrafts one, so we have more mana to play with, which is good. And we get Aya. Okay, biggest problem with Aya on Lunatic, she has two greys. I don't know how characters that don't have uh, accurate attacks immediately deal with Aya, because you've got to hit her three times with five mana, by the way, which is basically all of your mana. You've got to hit her, like, three times every single turn. And she has a way of, like, stopping you from just not doing anything throughout the fight. So I don't know how you're supposed to beat her with uh, other characters, really. It doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but whatever. Um, we want to have the shoot available because we do want to get her to start doing stuff and you just need to attack her to get her to start doing stuff. I want to have borrow materials for the next turn, so I want my rainbow mana, so that's why I didn't want to just use an illusion laser. So now we should draw a bunch of potions and get a lot of damage out of this, which is good. Yep, quite a lot of damage out of that. Also gets rid of the greys because they are accurate attacks, so that is good. We have one potion in Orthodox Rebellion left, so that's great. We can go here, grab ourselves this. Ah, uh, the potion's the last card in the deck, which is slightly annoying, but not the end of the world. We'll just use our stuff here, and we'll use the potion as part of dealing with her next turn. So yeah, she does 20 damage, which is, you know, a lot, but that's fine. Ah, and now she does 20 on Grazable. So wonderful, right? <laughs> I say it, it's 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 scary. A lot of lot of nasty stuff here. Uh, we want to have product of failure for sure. I think this is a turn to just use the the rainbow here. There's a lot of cards in deck at this point, but this is the the turn to just scry. Um, yeah, we want to just remove these two. Use one of the rainbow so I can have more mana for next turn and just block with the rest of it. I'll exile one of the shadows. Doesn't really matter, the game shouldn't last that much longer, but it's more just getting as much mana available as we can here. And yeah, we have enough attacks, so with the accurate, we can get through. I don't know how non marissa A characters get through this fight. I really don't. Helium 3 is very interesting. We don't have cards that cost 3 or more yet, but when we do, we'll gain uh, we'll gain the mana back afterwards. It's a colorless mana, but that's still pretty useful. So it means we can start looking into, say, maybe Close Eye Shot could be something. We don't have Firepower at the moment, so I don't really want that card. I think Stargazing might actually be the play here. Satellite Illusion is a really good card, but we just don't have the... the... Gray, uh, the... Ah, uh, what am I trying to say? We don't have 
a lot of the other stuff we want for it just yet. So, let's upgrade... Uh, upgrading one of the basic blocks kind of feels bad, to be honest, but it might actually be the play. I don't know. I'm I'm always hesitant for upgrading these, especially because they got nerfed at some point. They used to be 14 and like the same block as what basic attacks did damage. So it used to be like eight eight block for this base one and uh, 14 for the the secondary. But they did get nerfed to be weaker than that, and so it's, it always just feels bad. Uh, if I upgrade improv, it draws four. Which is, I think, reasonable to do here. Uh, it is maybe a bit of a dicey card if I don't have that. So, yeah, we're just going to go for that for now. We do have enough bat, uh, power to do a spell card here as well, which is good. And we managed to keep most of our health. We didn't fight the three fairies, so we managed to keep most of our health through this first, uh, first section. So, hopefully we can do this. 260 health at this point. It was 240 on normal, so... The big thing is that... Silver Lockdown starts at doing 10 damage now. For every 8 cards I play, it is 10 damage, which is very annoying, actually. <laughs> that is a lot of damage to, to take on here. Alright, Orthodox is going to be our first bet here. We're going to use one of these scries. Product to Failure is really good. I don't think I really want to do much else from there. We're going to take 2 damage immediately here, but I think that is fair enough. And we'll just leave the turn at that. Okay. Craft Potion, really good here as well. She's doing a defensive turn here, so we'll go for that. Get as many potions out as we can. Boop. Boop. Four. Seems pretty good. Alright, so we got all of our potions out in one go. So now we just need to go through the rest of the deck. Which is fine. Uh, we'll go one... Do need to defend against Silver Lockdown here, so I think that's going to be this that does that. And then we'll improv to draw through the rest of the deck. Oh, not quite draw through the rest of the deck because the hand is full, but that's fine. Um, okay, let's use the Occult then so I can do 14 damage with a laser and finish off with Borrow Materials so we have our mana for next turn. Puts the lockdowns in, so we are drawing those immediately, which is really painful, but it's fine. We'll survive. Probably want to trigger one of those immediately, to be honest, just to get it out of the deck. Um, don't really want any of these, if I'm being honest with you. So what's next? Orthodox? Yeah, it's fine, I suppose. It gets the... Uh, we can... Oh, that's not the right one. We can trigger the other lockdown. I really want to get to product of failure if I can. Let's see. Uh, we're going to take some damage for doing it, though. But I think it's probably for the best. Uh, not getting there. Okay, let's full send these. Yeah, okay. I really want to get there, though. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna do this. I'm gonna take our damage because I think it's best if we just keep going here. Okay. Didn't get to it, can't go any further. That's fine. I still have one potion in deck so we can get through some of her grays this turn. Because yeah, three grays getting put on as well here. Uh for Sakia, so definitely needed to get through some of that. We have no defense for this turn. That's not amazing. <laughs> to be completely honest with you, that is less than stellar. Um, alright. I think we are probably going to have to use our bomb here. So we'll do our 32, put two potions into the deck. That also gets rid of one of her greys. So now with this, we can get rid of the last one. And Satellite Illusion can do some damage as well as give us some stuff. That's the idea here. Okay, we have one rainbow left in hand, so if I do that into... I want to borrow materials here as well. We're going to take another 10, so like this is starting to get a little bit scary, but the fi if I can do this well enough, I'll just take her out before we actually have to worry about this. So that's really where I'm going with this right now. Uh, Stargazing... 
Okay, right, so... If I go ahead and do improv is probably what I want here. Uh, we will do that. So we can go roll another rainbow and improv draw four. Gets at least two potions out and then we can draw even more than that. For, you know, keep going, get that one. So now we have a full four again, which is good. And that lets us do Orthodox Rebellion into probably f not needing to full send defense here. I think we could just do the 14 with Illusion Laser. Because that puts us pretty close to winning from here, actually. And we have enough health that we can just use that as a resource. Because there's the potion, we just need 15 damage from here, and we basically have that. We're going to take some damage off of the silver lockdown, but that is fine. So we'll go that, and now we just need one. Take the ten, that's fine, and there we go. Okay. Good. It is a completely different playstyle to go from my usual let's try and take no damage every turn when I play the lower difficulties to how much of my health can I use as a resource in this fight. And uh, that is probably why I don't like Lunatic as much. We got a couple of good things here. The Fragments of the World is actually quite nice because we could just replace the, the wolf fur and probably... Uh, I want to say one of the basic attacks, but we did get just a knife, so maybe a basic defense. We could get some replacement cards there. Also, blue gets us into Cooling Agent. The white mana from Spare Throwing Knives is pretty cool. Being able to add a throw and knife plus is also nice, and we could get twofold chemical here. I think I might actually just take the blue, because I really do think Fragments of the World is actually really good here. And this means that we don't take Sakuya cards, which means our card pool is still condensed enough. The Sake dish is pretty cool too, being able to gain some firepower, but we're not... Like, I would say we're not attacking that much, we're attacking more than I normally like to in Marissa A, but I think we just go for this, because it converts that easily, and... Yeah, it probably should be one of the basic... Uh, it could just be one of the one-mana attack cards, I suppose. It probably should be one of these blocks, though, and we just take another defense card or two in the next area. Truf, true Full Moon is not the sort of card I want to see here. Oh, no, that is bad. <laughs> that is a really bad card to get when you didn't get the, uh, when you don't have Amulet. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. And Fluorescent Forest is not amazing, to be honest. If we upgrade it, it'll probably be like, okay, but it is a bit slow. That wasn't the greatest of combination we could have gone. Open Universe is interesting. This is actually super good later on. Uh, yeah, information text box for the stuff here. You can't choose copies with this effect. Um... This is really interesting later on, because especially when you upgrade it, it doesn't reduce the cost, but it does make the things cost zero. So if we get a really good ability that generates potions, we can just get it out of the deck with this. It is an extremely good card, we will take it. Hopefully we can make some use out of it. Okay, I have o actually only fought Yuyuko in uh, this so far on Lunatic, so... She is probably the easiest of the stage 2 bosses, so we maybe got a little bit fortunate on that one. Uh, I don't exactly know where I want to go within this one. I kind of want to get, like, the shop, but at the same time, maybe I should wait on that anyway. Alright, so first off, we're taking 20 this turn, and I have no way of defending against that, which is kind of annoying. I am, like, one shot, but I suppose... It could be worse. Let's do as much as we can here, right? So I go basically defend the 10 that I can and just have that going. Oh yeah, Helium 3, right. So we get an extra mana back off of that. I mean, I don't think that's going to make much of a difference here because, I mean, we get like one damage off or something, right? So it's not going to be that important, but it's there. It's a pretty cool effect, right? Gain some block, and woo, two damage. 
Oh, four damage, because just a knife, right? Yeah. Woo, I don't know. I, I wish that Fluorescent Forest put the potions into the deck. Then it would actually be, like, kind of good. But as it stands, ooh, not amazing. Okay, so I said True Full Moon is not a card that I would want, because it's basically you lose when you play, you take 9,999 damage after you play seven cards from this thing. So we need to remove this from our card pool, like, you know, it is actual toxic, uh, you know, in our actual poison in our deck right now. So we definitely need to remove that at some stage. Looking through the rest of what we have in our deck here, though, um, Stargazing does seem kind of good. Yeah, we can probably... I really wish I could. I would keep Rebellion. Rebellion would be good here, but I need to get rid of this guy. I think I need to just full send here. I have 15 block in hand already. Yeah, we need to, we need to get this going. So let's do that. Okay. From there, taking this guy out is actually kind of annoying with our current hand. We have one potion left in deck as our main thing. So I suppose if I improv here, then we'll still be able to do some stuff with that. Didn't exactly hit the right target, but that's okay. We have five mana from here, so if I go products, one, two, uh, how many cut? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need to. Oh, this this hand is kind of weird to play out. Um, because I want to do bar materials, but I have too many cards in hand for that right now. So let's go ahead and. Uh, Orthodox Rebellion is also gonna add a card to hand. It's like everything adds that I don't I don't want to add right now. Let's go this into borrow so that now hand is still at 10. Product of failure can only add one shadow now because the hand is too full and we can use the rainbow to grab Orthodox Rebellion so I'm now at full block. And we can scry, grab ourselves the potions. That's a lot of potions grabbed too, which is really good. From there, we actually have the capability to just like take this guy out. So we'll do that. And now we draw two. Okay. From that, we can get more potions. So we do that. And take her out. Awesome. Okay, 10 damage in the first fight. Not amazing, but hopefully we can survive with that. Ageless Dream is really good, actually. Uh, we definitely need to take that. Weak and vulnerable for three turns. Very, very powerful. Right, what are we going to get? Finally, we get Junko. I don't know if this is <laughs> uh, Okay, so this is the 12th run that we have done on YouTube and we've finally gotten to Junko. What Junko does is she will turn one of your mana into a double colorless. It means that we don't have as many colors that we can work with, obviously, which is potentially bad, but it also means that we have seven mana to play with. Now you could just convert your off color and then you just don't get access to that type of card anymore. That's fine. Like that is certainly an option. I kind of want access to cooling agent and stuff though. Oh, it is awkward because I also still want access to radioactive elements, which is what this one gives. So it's tough. I don't want to get rid of this, of course, because then I uh, like all of my potion stuff is on black mana right now, so I can't really get rid of that one. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't have any blue cards right now, so it wouldn't really hurt me too much if I got rid of it. It just means I wouldn't have access to that type of uh, effect here. That's probably fine, to be honest. We'll get rid of the, the blue mana here. So now we no longer have access to Cooling Agent as a possibility, but I think it's for the best. Because otherwise, yeah, I don't know. Alright, drones! 
So with the drones, we have still the amulet 54 and 53 health here. We have no offense on this first turn, that is kind of annoying. But we do have more chances now to draw into other stuff. Product to failure, pretty useful here. Um, Aegis Dream would put the Vulnerable on, and the Amulet would get rid of the Weaken, which is still fine, but I don't think I'm going to spend mana on that this turn. So let's just do that, and it doesn't really matter from there. I guess we will just do that, sure. I will say, if I can get an Amulet, I might actually keep Truthful Moon. Or, like, try and utilize it here, because that would be pretty fun. Uh, okay, so now we're taking 15. This guy's on the defense. Normally he goes attack turn two, so feeling kind of fortunate with that. Let's see what Craft Potion could do for us here. Ah, uh, just a bunch of draw, huh? Mm. Um, how many cards will I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if I go borrow here, that gets me up to 10. And then we'll see what we get here. Open Universe is something that we could still use. Uh, we could use it to get a potion. That seems kind of unorthodox, but could be good. Okay, let's let's try this out. So we can use this here in order to open universe for any card out of the deck that's left. Improvisation's actually kind of good too. Uh, it will cost one. So it means that this will take up our colorless mana. But we get to draw like four cards off it, which is pretty good. If I just take the potion, that means I get two potions from here. And I could just scry the rest of it too. That's probably the best bet, so we'll just do that. If we get two potions in hand, they automatically get thrown. So we get some damage out of that. We did use uh, a high cost card, so the Helium gives us more mana back as well, which is pretty good. And it's mostly about trying to take out one of the dudes here, uh, which I'm not quite capable of doing yet, but potions should help us out with that. So let's do satellite, full scry, to grab, I think improv actually, because then I can do more with this, so use that. Okay, and uh, that's just about as far as we go. We do have Stargazing that could do some stuff as well, so we can try that. Um, how much do we need? We don't need much on any of them, yeah, so I think we're actually fine with what we have in hand, but uh, just in case we'll take that. So let's do 14 on there. And 14 on it. Yeah, we were fine. I just... For some reason, I thought we might have needed another attack. I don't know why. But, okay. Managing to get through without too much. Alley off is really good. Uh, speed duel is really good, too, if we could ever get into burst. But we don't have capabilities to do that yet. Violin solo is also not terrible, but the quiet moonlight is really annoying. Alley off is fantastic, though. Uh, if we get some charge based up, we will actually convert into that. That is not a bad play at all. So I think the two upgrade choices here realistically are Fluorescent Forest so that it costs one uh, black and one of anything, or most likely it's going to be Open Universe so that the cards that it generate, uh, it like creates cost zero. Um, Ageless Dream is really good later because it becomes innate so you always start with it and that will be very good for future fights and stuff. But right now, I think it's better just to take the uh, the Open Universe one, because costing zero is fantastic. I don't particularly want to get rid of any of these, because Just a Knife is not something that is like an apple, where it's a, you get it and it does the thing, and then it doesn't matter that you sell it. If I sell this, I do have lower damage from here, so I don't want to sell that, and Helium Free I do have a couple of cards already that are expensive, so I really don't want to sell that. So we're just going to leave here. I have quite a bit of money anyway. we we'll definitely be going for a shop here. Yeah, that makes the most sense. It's not coming with an event. Unless I take... No, because I can go up here. Right, so yeah, well, we can take the event still as well. I would like to have Kianae show up if possible. 
think that would be pretty good here. So, okay, this event, uh, this not an event, but this one is kind of annoying. Uh, I haven't actually fought this one yet, but yeah, Luna, the rabbit trickster, takes 15 money from you every turn. Her debuffs are really annoying, so it's possible we might just pay her off, to be honest. Um, and then, of course, we know how irritating this one is. It limits you to three cards per turn. Pretty sure it still limits you to three cards per turn in Lunatic as well, but I haven't actually fought her yet, so I might actually be off base with that. That would be pretty irritating if I was. Uh, Alright. Let's go Satellite Illusion. The thing is, as much as I want to take her out first, I think it might be better taking the Rabbit Trickster out. But I really do want rid of this stupid fox, so we are going to do that first. Uh, Craft Potion's good here, I can use the Occult to get it out. And from there we can't do anything else really, so... This is where the difficulty begins. Uh, it is tempting. We have how many? Four potions in deck at the moment? It is actually tempting to bomb here. Just to get a little bit more damage out and to put extra potions in the deck to explode them next turn. I think we will, actually. Because we're getting a little bit more power from our fights and stuff as well, I think that's actually going to be the correct play. Yeah, limited to three cards per turn until she uh, gets KO'd. But hopefully we can get some potions to work? A little bit. We do not have enough damage in this hand right now to take her out. Which is kinda irritating actually, it feels like we really should have. We also do not have enough mana to play like Open Universe plus True, True Full Moon. That would have been great. Um, Open Universe should still be pretty good. There's nothing but potions left. Yeah, if we Open Universe for a potion here, hopefully one of them hits her? Yeah, okay, that's good. Oh, both hit her. That's fantastic. Right, so now... Yeah, now we actually don't have to worry quite so much about that. I really want to play this here, because 7 firepower in this situation... 7 firepower is... Like, every... I have 3 potions left. 7 firepower is enough to make them do 22, right? And all 3 of them hitting would be enough. So... The temptation is to go True Full Moon into... The only problem is, what if she doesn't... Uh, that's awkward. Alright, let's, let's just do this. We'll go Borrow, we'll use both of these. Go Orthodox. And now... We will do it. So, after we play 7 Short Life Expectancy, after playing 7 more cards, we will lose the game. However, we can do 21 with this, and Astrology, yeah, there we go. 22 with those. Okay, it, it mattered, it came up. Fair enough. <laughs> I think if we just have, like, an amulet, we can probably ignore that debuff. Shade is pretty good here. It's cost efficient. Orthodox Rebellion is really nice too. I do need another defense card, like, without a doubt. Orthodox Rebellion is, it has been, like, super useful. The shade is just super efficient for what it does, but it does add more trash cards into the hand, which we currently can't remove. I'm gonna take the Orthodox. I think that's probably a little better here. Ah, uh, we do not need this one. This is a dead event. I mean, again, if we wanted to, to save reload here, which maybe I could show that off, actually. Pay 100, get a random rare. If it's not good, we can show the, the whole, like, reload system here. You know what? Sure. Ore Sun is good, but not for us. So, if we just hit restart here, then we'll keep our money and reload everything. It'll have a reload at the end, so oh, it's not a zero reload runner. I'm a, I'm a 
but whatever. I don't even know what that was. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what you can do if you are okay with, like, say, reloading stuff. Or a sun we could have kept, but uh, we don't quite have enough uh, charge stuff at the moment. If I had radioactive elements, I probably would have kept it, but that's not where we are at the moment, so yeah. Which is Crucible, pretty good. Uh, Luminous Mushroom, very good. Alley Off works well with that. Wow, Devil's Codex is good too. This is a pretty strong shop. All things considered. Uh, Luminous Mushroom we will need to upgrade basically immediately so that it becomes cost efficient, but that's pretty powerful. Um, hand Warmer is something that could go with that as well. Uh, that will also need an upgrade later on, but it does let you uh, basically draw free cards for zero, which is amazing. We have a lot of Scry right now, so even Premeditation is pretty good. I think that true, true Full Moon is unfortunately staying in the deck at the moment because I don't think we're going to have enough money to like resolve everything I want here. Right, Witch's Crucible definitely do want... That's going to have to eat an upgrade later on as well because we want it to generate a second card, but that's fine. Um, Luminous Mushroom is a very nice amount that we have here, but that for sure as well because it generates potions. And before I go any further, as much as I want to remove this card, we are going, and this one actually, we are going to upgrade this. Because not only does it gain 15 block, which is a pretty big upgrade, it also lowers the cost of it, which is super important here. So we'll do that. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to need, well, we're going to want Hand Warmer, and that's going to eat the next one up. And Devil's Codex is pretty good here because we have a few cards that we can exile. So we'll go for that too. And we have just enough sort of money around. I don't really need any more attacks or anything. Shooting the Moon is a pretty cool one, but we don't really need any attacks like this. I don't particularly want these, although canned food is kind of nice. I think probably the best bet is to take the Secret Cloak. Since we do end up holding quite a few cards in hammer stuff and just having the extra block here is fine. I really love this one too, increasing the uh, amount of awards that we get for, for fights and stuff. Don't really think that's necessary here. Alright, Kokoro. Have not fought Kokoro, I don't think, on uh, Lunatic yet. So, again, I've only done one run, so I guess it makes sense. Current attack power is 29, so it is quite high. Let's go see what we get from this first. Oh, uh, nothing but basics. We'll just delete all of those. Fluorescence not amazing, but I guess it could be worse given how we're starting this. Let's see what we can get off of this one first. Which is Crucible is probably better. Yeah, so we'll do that. Get ourselves Potion in the deck. Uh, I guess there's not really a reason not to use Hand Warmer, because it just does a thing which we might end up needing later. Um, we can Craft Potion, so that's good. Currently on 17? If I Craft Potion, then I can't actually use Orthodox Rebellion as well here. Definitely don't care too much about the Ill Illusion Laser this first turn. I think we don't care about Orthodox either in this case. So we want to fire this off. I uh, can't use any of the other stuff. That's a shame, but it is what it is. We will take eight this opening turn. Okay. Oh, seven, sorry. Counting is hard. 29 that I thought, for some reason I said 30 in my head. Weird. Whatever. Uh, all right. 27 from her, 9 from the thing at the top, and then the other one's going to do, like, firepower down? I'm pretty sure the poison's going to take it out before we get to that point. Oof, okay. Uh, we have a couple of rainbows, which is good. Let's go Luminous Mushroom, takes up the overdrive, and puts two in the deck, which is good. Then we can go Codex, Exile, Truth, Truthful Moon, because I don't want to use that. Open Universe, you say. Well, we have a potion in deck to use. I suppose that would do it. We have just enough of it? I think we need to use the Occult to make that work. Yeah. Let's do that. 
borrow. Probably put Weaken on you now, because that is a lot of damage that you were doing, and I do not care for that right now. Uh, yeah, open universe on the potion. Why not? So take him out. No stay this there. No attack there. That's good. So now we're only taking 18, which is survivable based on what we have in hand right now. Um, let's see what improv gives us. Gives us those. Okay. Uh, Scry? Looking for products was the main thing here. Well, we definitely don't need the glare to be available. Probably don't need the laser. Boundary, no. What do we want to draw off of this? That's the main one, isn't it? I guess boundary would be okay to draw. Hmm. If I'm comfortable enough taking the free, then getting fluorescent forest would be fine. But I don't think I really want that, because it's going to take up both of my rainbows in hand as well. Honestly, yeah, it's probably best just to take the block. So we don't take damage this turn. Oh, we weren't taking damage because of the cloak, right? I should have used uh, should have used the shoot. For some reason, I forgot that I even had the cloak there. That's my bad. Okay. Uh, Luminous Mushroom, 100% using that here. Borrow Materials again, definitely using that. Uh, I think we want to Satellite get some damage off here. We haven't actually attacked her yet, so we should take care of some of that. Um, she's doing 10, and that's doing 9. I don't think I need this one. So, rainbow number 1 to do craft potion. Draw 2. Okay, well, it takes him out, so we're not taking damage this turn. I guess that's good. Products... Uh, alley off into the potions. That's really good. And you can sort of see where the where this is going in terms of synergy aspects now. This is actually super strong as it currently stands. Because we have Devil's Codex. As soon as I get this upgraded, this is the next target, by the way. So that it costs one black mana instead of two. That's going to be ridiculously nice for us. Just as soon as I get that upgraded. Uh, not much else to do from here, to be honest. We're not actually taking damage, so let's just go ahead and do that. Now, one more turn of Vulnerable. Uh, Yuyuko's card is ridiculously strong, to be honest with you. Uh, we have two rainbows that we can use here as well. And, yeah, seems kind of good. We do have a drawer in hand too, so... Let's just do this one, because this puts... Uh, oh, I've got charge too. So this will put two more potions into the deck. And rainbow, so that we can use improv. And take her out. Very good, very good. Uh, the Dango is not terrible, because it will get some extra life back at the end of fights. That's respectable enough. I don't think any of these are worth it. Rocket Broom is fun, but not really something that we want to use here. Astrology Study is really good, but this will eat an upgrade in order to be two black mana and you start with it in hand uh, at the start of the fight. And Dreadful Raging Waves, we don't have temporary firepower, so we do not want that. Alright, let's move on. Apple or Dreamcatcher? Dreamcatcher lets us remove a card. And also heals us a little bit. Whereas the apple gives us 12 max life. So we technically get two more life off of that. But the dream catcher I think is a bit more versatile here. So let's do that. We are healing as well. So that is good. And I think this is an excellent time to get rid of this one. Because this is just too expensive. And it almost never comes up. And it's just frustrating. So I don't want to deal with it. Alright, on to events. Oh, even better. Okay, this is a good reason not to have gotten rid of too many of the uncommon, or the, the basic cards, right? I did get rid of one, so that's a bit of a shame. But now we have the basic cards just upgradable. If we had been able to remove a bunch of them beforehand, then what we could have maybe done here is uh, remove a non-basic 
from uh, from the deck, right? Because we could have removed Fluorescent Forest, for example. But yeah, there's also Transform, but you lose half your life to do that. <laughs> Definitely not a good idea here. But uh, that's also kind of a fun one, I suppose. But yeah, we've, we've got these upgraded now. So 18 damage because of just a knife. That's actually really good. And yeah, they, they are respectable parts of the arsenal now. Can't complain at that. Alrighty, let's see what we can do from here. Oh, well, probably a good job we did get them because, man, this is not a... This is not a good starting point. I cannot actually full send here. Like, I can't defend very well against this either, which is annoying. Let's just get the potions doing a thing. And, yeah, nothing I can really do about this opener. We're going to take a lot of damage here, but there's just not much not much to do about it. 12 damage to be precise. That's pretty icky. And triple purify next turn. That's why we keep hold of this. Because purifying three of my mana? Woof. Death sentence if we don't have something to go with that. Okay, what else do we still have for Open Universe? Product of Failure, I guess, could be pretty good here. Do we have a draw in hand? Well, we have Satellite Illusion and Alioth. Yeah, we have draw. So then, we'll go we'll go for it all this turn, I think. Do this to go with a rainbow. Use that on Open Universe. We can grab ourselves Product of Failure. So now that costs zero to play both of these, which is pretty good. So we will do that does put a lot of shadows in the hand, that is kind of painful, but we can handle it. Okay, 15 and 11 times 2. If we're looking at hopefully taking this guy out anyway, we do get another scribe. We have a card drawer as well. Okay, this should be fine. Let's do this to get more potions in the deck. We know that the next card is a shoot, so we can do this one. And scry that. Seems good. So we'll take him out. And then from there, improv. Yeah, she also has two optical camouflage like Natori normally does. So that kind of messes things up a bit as well. It's uh, sort of painful to to deal with that. Uh, craft pot. Get some more potions going. That is so many more potions. <laughs> They're all hitting the optical camo though. Man. Oh, she dies to the poison now at least. So that's pretty good. Uh, hand warmer obviously is fine. Let's go here. Um, we've got seven mana left at the moment. Gonna use a little bit more on Orthodox, probably. Go shoot you. Actually, Stargazing. Is there a. Is there. There's an attack in the deck still. So if we go Stargazing. Um, this is actually fine. Because we'll Codex, get rid of a Shadow. Sure, just keep shooting her, that makes total sense, right? And, uh, yeah, do that, doesn't matter. That is the power of this deck when it fires off on all cylinders. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, another craft potion is fine. It's not the greatest card out there when it's not upgraded, but it's more than good enough for what we need at the moment. Um, Devil's Codex, and then Hand Warmer will be the next one. That seems like the best. Yomu! Animation Specialist! She hits three times! I actually did not fight Yomu on uh, on my uh, first playthrough of Hard. She hits three times. So three lock-on is what she's going to put, as well as just doing 18 damage on the first turn. That's kind of tough, not going to lie. Um, I think we need to go ahead and put as much stuff as we can in deck here. So we'll go Products, Orthodox Rebellion, I could full defend, I'm taking one damage here. 
Is that fine? I mean, what else am I really doing with this hand? Let's just full defend and do our 10 damage. I wasn't taking damage anyway because of the secret cloak. Keep forgetting about that. Nine times three. Good lord. Okay, eight times three because of the, the reduction. But still, jeez, oh, that's a lot of damage. What have we got that I would use uh, Open Universe on from here? Actually, not much. I don't think Open U I mean, other than maybe a potion. Open Universe doesn't necessarily do a lot because we've drawn all the cards that I would use it on. That's kind of funny. Um, so in that case, let's just try and play around it then, right? Also, 220 health, not the highest out there, but with how much damage she's doing, that's still pretty respectable. Uh, yeah, improv. Fluorescent Forest is probably too slow here, so I think we ditch that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, exile that one. Alley off is good. What have we still got on deck? Uh, Ageless Dream would be really good to get here. Let's go for that. Uh, don't get it immediately, but that's fine. We have the scry, so we'll do that. Age of Stream is there, that's good. So, craft. Potion comes out first, that's nice. More mana. Age of Stream for the vulnerable and weakened. So now she's only doing a more respectable 18. That's, uh, let's be honest, that's a bit more reasonable to deal with here. Uh, we can go Satellite Illusion. Probably just get a fresh deck draw here. Because now, Product of Failure is actually looking like something I could open Universe. I have enough mana for it. Let's uh, do that, I suppose. Still got three mana to block with, I can still full block. So, yep. Gonna go ahead and do that then. To grab this. Could have also potentially grabbed uh, Witch's Crucible, could have been a thing. But I think this is better, because this just adds a ton of potions into deck from here. And now we can stargazing and try and fish them all out. Which, uh... Yeah? Seems kind of good. Improv does draw a lot more cards, but we also have probably too many cards in hand for that, so... Uh, craft! Flip. And then we can alley off. Get all of these. And this just finishes it off. Alright, awesome. Good fight, good fight. Uh, Caracasta is really nice, especially on Lunatic, as we'll probably see when we get to the very end here. Nice to have that as the, the opening gambit, so happy to see that. I don't think any of these are good enough here. Strength and body is pretty respectable, but I don't think it's good enough to really justify this difficulty, so we're gonna skip this. And then now, our final upgrade for this section is Hand Warmer. This card is okay otherwise, but the draw three is really what makes it good. Right, Yuko starts with her stuff summoned. 45 and 43 health here too. That's the difficulty in this fight. She starts with her thing summoned and immediately goes in for the kill. So basically she's a turn quicker here. Goes in for the kill with like 27 damage on the first turn as well. This this fight is maybe a little bit on the awkward side. Thankfully the Karakasa did upgrade the Occult because I guess most of her stuff is upgraded here. So we get an extra mana off of that which is really good. I... I'm really tempted to just fire this immediately. 380 health as well, by the way. A little bit on... Uh, I don't know if it's on the low side, actually, for, for these, but I think it kind of is. Because I think most of the time it's like 400 or something. So she is a little bit on the lower end, but she's also the only one that does summons. And these summons are really nasty, actually. So, yeah, let's... I'm going to fire it straight away. Because I really want rid of this one, because the, the graze is just irritating, right? This is a bit more of an attack focused uh, deck, so I don't want those around. Right, Ageless Dream is actually pretty good to see here as well. 
Um, we want to borrow. And I think I need to do this one this turn. So Satellite Illusion will take this out. That's a good start. Ageless Dream is also very good to see here. Just trying to think, is there anything else I would want first? If I go... If I go for one of these, I can do Orthodox and Ageless, and I'm like torn between whether or not I want to craft or use Luminous here. There's still 28 damage, but with the cards I have in hand, Secret Cloak is going to get there. I haven't forgotten about it this time. Plus, I also have Broom Defense I can use. I'm going to craft here, I think. Okay, get the other one of those, that's fine. We'll just defend with the rest of it and that'll be enough here. And now her spell card is going to come out immediately on the second uh, turn here, so that's the other bit to go ooh about here on in this fight. Alright, Fluorescent, if there's ever going to be a fight for it, it's probably going to be one like this where it's a little bit of a longer, a longer battle, so... Yeah, seems good. Uh, let's go for our scries first, see what we can get. Open universe. I can play it. I'm kind of game for it. Uh, yeah, I'm game for it. Let's do that. So we use a rainbow. Open universe for product here? Or Witch's Crucible is still good too. If I get product, I might end up not having enough potions for the rest of the fight, but I think if I want to win this early with the vulnerable in play, I need to do this now. So that is what we will do. And go for the products. Get that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need to play one of a card before I can use Codex. So let's do that then. Just so I don't overdraw and not get the occult. Bunch of stuff. Okay, that seems pretty good. So now we do extra mana here, and we're on eight, uh, nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, which means hand warmer is one shot. So we'll do this one and warmer. Seems good. So from there, I think Illusion Laser is best here. Just take him out. Just, it's going to get in the way if I don't. We have three potions left in deck, plus the Crucible. This seems like a good time to use Astrology. And it is. Yep, we'll do that. Use the Scry. So much more mana off of this. Uh, use the last one to get the Crucible. So now we can do that. So the one problem from here potentially is that now we don't have uh, as many... Like, we don't have product to failure. We only have a couple of crap potions to actually make potions now. So now it's going to be more about how much damage can I deal without the potions. And that's the question I need to, to still ask myself here. Luminous. Oh, Luminous also generates. Right. We're actually a little bit better off then, maybe, than I thought. Because Luminous Mushroom's actually still really good, too. So from here, we will take... Yeah. Still free damage. I think maybe she could have done with doing a bit more damage. I don't know. It's kind of weird. She starts with only losing free life. Like, you'll, you'll lose more as it goes. But that still seems slightly weak to start with. I don't know. Uh, she's going to do Ageless Dream herself, so I guess I'm probably going to get hit with Mega Status stuff here. I don't know. Uh, probably need to just deal with her before that happens, right? That would be the idea. 
And I mean, we're kind of getting there, let's be honest. We have a lot of damage dealt here. Just a bit more to go and we should be fine. Um, Yeah, I think if we just scry for, for two of these, we win the fight, right? 27 and 15. Yeah, that Vulnerable is devastatingly good. Really wish we could have taken Full Moon Howl earlier, but it wasn't to be. I... I do not like Laverton. I had a conversation about this with Ray recently, actually, where he really, really likes Laverton, and I'm just like, dude, this is so dangerous, especially on Lunatic as well. Vulnerable might not be placed that often, but there's a couple of characters that can do it that will absolutely devastate you for it. The fact that we don't have the fridge from... No, it's not the fridge, it's the washing machine from Kianae to block Vulnerable makes me extremely hesitant to take this. The mana would be really good for our card pool, though. Alternatively, we could just take the the blue mana, because starting with two astrologies in hand, actually really cracked. And we can get Cooling Agent again at that point, which might end up just making the deck over the top. So that's probably the pick, actually, because starting with a couple of extra scries is really, really good. This is so tempting just because of how powerful the um, Yuko card is. But I think it's for the best that I don't. I'm gonna take the, the blue one, and we will see what we can do. Okay. I think Refined Potion has got to be the pick, but Fires of Hawkeye is a really interesting one too. Starting with Random Skill, temporarily cost one, has Exile and Ethereal. If we got, like, uh, and embrace the darkness off of that, it'd be hilarious. Refined Potion is the pick though, because Open Universe picking this up would be really powerful, and we don't even have to upgrade this for this to be good. If we do upgrade it, then it makes uh, potions that stay in deck, like, and discard do more. Kind of works with Fluorescent Forest, to be honest, but that card's also kind of whatever. Charge Conversion is not the worst card out there, but we don't really have any, uh, way of using it right now. If you upgrade this, it uh, costs zero and has Echo, which is very powerful. So, like, if you have Radioactive Elements and whatnot, that card's really good. Since we don't, you know, not a consideration. Pfizer Hawkeye, by the way, will make the tri will trigger once when you uh, upgrade it, like, immediately. So that's pretty cool. Very good card, but yeah, we're taking Refine here. Okay, I have only fought Remelia on Act 3 right now. We're fighting Junko this time. Normally, Junko is like one of the easier bosses. I don't know on Lunatic. She might purify too, which would be devastating. So I don't know how this is going to go. I guess we'll find out. Okay. On Lunatic, two grays on everything still. That's fine. On Lunatic, Apex Speeder does uh, 10 damage after you play one card. So we probably should play defense first, which is irritating, but whatever. You know, it is what it is. Um, I am going to dig through the deck first. Hand warm is a really good one to get, so we'll do that. Draw free. Uh, dig a little further. Borrow materials is good to get. We don't need the defenses this turn. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can play that. It's fine. Orthodox is great. We don't have any blue cards right now, so we'll just use that mana as a spare one. We still have a bunch that we can do with our uh, astrologies and whatnot. There's Refined Potion, which is good. We will take that and use that as our rest of turn here. Well, I say rest of turn. We can technically still fire a laser too. We probably should. Because firing the laser at least gets rid of some of the grays. She's going to reapply it, which is annoying, but it at least gets rid of some grays here. Oh yeah, by the way, their, their newspaper thing, I didn't even mention that before, but their newspaper thing puts three freaking status cards into your deck, which is just so irritating. Like, why would you do that? Why do you have to be that, uh, that crow? Right? Whatever. Uh, let's get this... Block some of that. It's 20 to 32 damage coming out this turn as well, so... Do have to keep that in mind. We've got product here, so that's gonna be good. We have a bunch of... 
good stuff in the hand for like drawing and whatnot here, so hopefully we can get some fun bits going out of this turn. Oh yeah, look at that damage. That's what we want to see. Alright, what else can we do? We can actually hit her, which is nice, because we, we've taken out all of her greys at this point, that's pretty fun. Uh, let's see what else we can draw first. Uh, Devil's Codex is really good, so we'll do that. Okay, we do actually want to attack, I, I think, because we need a space, so we'll exile a shadow, draw more. Luminous Mushroom's good. We have Witch's Crucible is the card left in deck. That's pretty good, too. Yeah, we have enough mana with the Helium, too. We have enough mana where I can draw through that, too. And we've got this. Yeah, we're fine. Um, cool. Let's just go ahead and do this one, then. So, put potions in the deck. Open Universe to get the Crucible. Crucibles cost zero mana because the Open Universe is upgraded, so we'll just put those in. And scry for all the potions. Blip. Blip. So we take her out. That's pretty good. And blip. Take her out. And the last one. Blip. Excellent. Yeah, this is why I really, really like Marissa. <laughs> Marissa A specifically. Oh, there's three pretty solid cards here. Frozen Laser is a little bit expensive by itself, but you upgrade it and it only costs two. It removes the blue from it. 15 damage cold to each enemy is nice, but I, I, we don't really need it on this one, to be honest. Rainbow Star Blast is a fantastic conversion point for all the ra uh, rainbow mana that we've got, and it's pre-upgraded too, which is really, really good. So all of the upgrade, all the mana that we get from the potions, we could just funnel it into one massive blast here. Full Moon Howl, though, is probably too much to turn down. This will need an upgrade, but this is an extra two vulnerable. Maybe if we took the Leviton, we could have had that going instead, but I, that's, yeah, you can't really know. Okay, uh, Toyo, we could take the life gain, uh, which means we would then have to remove the moonscape later on. I think I'm going to skip entirely here. I don't really want to remove impurities because they would just eat upgrades to make them worth it. I think we'll just refuse this one. The life gain would be very helpful, don't get me wrong, but it would also sort of force me to go here to remove the moonscape. And I don't think that's a good idea. <clears throat> this would have been a good fight for Frozen Laser, looking at it. But I think we can make this work. Um, Open Universe can grab us... Quite a bit, actually. This seems like the sort of thing where Full Moon Howl would be pretty good to grab, because we would reduce firepower by 6, so we would take a ma like 8 damage here. That might be worth it just by itself, <clears throat> because otherwise we we are taking a lot here, right? It's uh, 26 plus 8, 34. That's, that is a lot of damage, for sure. This is where, yeah, Frozen Laser would be quite nice to be able to do a bunch of damage, but it wouldn't have... No, it would have been fine with Open Universe. We'd have gotten the kill on everything if we took Laser last round. So, food for thought, I suppose. Um, well, I think we are going to start with Open Universe. It's just what do I actually want to take from it. Like, product is reasonable, Full Moon Howling is the defensive option, which could be solid here. Which is Crucible doesn't really do enough for us, I don't think. I think product is probably the best bet. So do that. And then we'll just play these now. So then we will refine potions so that they do more damage. And now we can start scrying to get the potions out. Uh, Full Moon Howling is actually really good to get here as well. So we'll just use that now, reduce the firepower down significantly. So now we're only taking uh, 14, 16, 19. 
uh, which we are going to have a decent amount of cards left in hand by the end of the turn, so that's good. Uh, can't play Craft Potion. Could play Orthodox Rebellion if I go ahead and do that now, because we'll get the Rainbow Mana, so that's good. Uh, spy again into that. Now we will be able to play the Craft Potion, so we will do that. We're vulnerable now, so we're taking a little bit more damage. It's now 24, but we'll still be able to full defend that by the end of the turn, so we're fine. This is assuming, of course, that nothing else dies. That's kind of an unfortunate set of hits, but whatever. Um, do I actually need to do that one? I kind of want to say no. I think doing Stargazing is better, because we'll get deeper into the deck. Uh, we can remove a lot of the not-so-useful stuff here, like all of that. So now, uh, might as well do the damage here, so that basically anything that gets hit at this point goes down, which is good. Sky to free. Uh, we don't have the mana for Codex right now, but we might in a bit, but I think it's probably better not risking that. Let's just take one of these out, actually. Uh, take out you. Into Hand Warmer. Great, and now we have Laser that we can just finish it off with. Awesome! Carefully manipulated to get through in a single turn. That's, that's the cool thing about this game. <laughs> when you can manage to finagle stuff like that. Uh, none of these are great for what we are doing in this particular run. Uh, Phoenix Wing Rise is not like the worst thing in the world, but it's not really what we need here. Stardust Reverie is pretty bad for everything really, it's not a very good card in general, but it's definitely not good here. And Asteroid Belt is a good charge card, but we're not playing Charge Marissa, so not the way that we want to go. Alright, upgrades. Not a ton left to upgrade, which is good because we really don't want to have to be in that spot. Um, I think the target is going to be Craft Pot here. I really want to do Crucible, but I think getting the extra draws off of this will get us through the deck better and will make things just nicer in general to go through. Right, what would you like to trade? Open Universe is not getting traded. Master of Collection is funny, but not actually very good because we don't play retain cards. Fires of Hawkeye is a good card. I just don't know if we need it, is the thing. But I mean, getting random skill stuff for what we have here is not the worst ever. Hmm. This is, this is one of those weird spots where I'm like, I don't actually know if I want the card. But I kind of want the card, you know? There's there's a lot of stuff that we could get off of fires that would be pretty solid. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna take it. We are going to take Fires of Hawkeye. Feast is not really worth it at this point. Like, if you kill enemies with it, then it gives you extra uh, max life. Which is cool, but it's far too late in the run to start using that sort of thing. So, just not going to bother. Alright, let's take our Elite here. Ooh, okay. This is a perfect excuse to get rid of Fluorescent Forest, because it's terrible. <laughs> it has been plaguing us pretty much the entire time here, the card is not very good, and it's... I mean, all of our other stuff is stuff that we want. We don't have any misfortunes to get rid of either, so we're getting rid of the Uncommon here. And unfortunately, we don't get to take full advantage of it, because we haven't lost any life yet since we just, like, OTK'd basically most of the time. But we do get 5 max life in this as well. If you give an Uncommon card, it gives you 30% life restore and 5 extra max life. So we do get a little bit of benefit, not as much as we could have, but that is still perfectly fine. Right. Hmm. So what do we do out of this one? Um, I mean a couple of things make sense right from the word go here, right? Product of failure just makes sense to fire off. Um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Borrow materials makes sense to do as well. Full moon howl makes sense to fire out as well. 
So now we're doing a lot more to them, we're taking less damage. The firepower down does affect their revenge bullets. So this 8 and 7, so it'll be 5 and 4. We do need to play maybe one more defensive card for it, but we can probably handle that. Get ourselves a black mana back and go hand warmer. Yep, potion immediately does the 4. Potion there is good. We probably... Oh yeah, she gains 2 firepower. Whenever you play a defense card on Lunatic, that's spooky. Uh, we're going to have to play said defense card, though, just in case we hit this thing. So, uh, all right, Codex, Exile the Shadow. Fires of Hawkeye is there, but uh, if we can get away without playing it, I would probably like to here. All right, let's Overdox, because we need to be able to defend against her attack here as well. So I think that's fine. Um, do some damage as well. We've got a bunch of a bunch of scry to play from here, so let's do that. Premeditation would be so good with this deck now, right? Like I didn't get it earlier, but you can sort of see why I wanted to, because it would play so nicely with what we have right now. It's fine though. We might still be able to get it. Alley off is really good here, so we'll do that. Um, into crucible. Seems good. Got two more scries that don't cost anything, so we will use those. That's why I wanted to get the extra defense, so I could take that out. Um, it's giving her more firepower, but I think putting the extra potions into that might mean we can win this turn, so I am willing to take that risk. Crap potion. Uh, yeah, there we go. Laser! Excellent. Win every fight in one turn, then you don't take damage. This is the uh, the crucial lesson here, right? Speed duel would be amazing, but we don't have enough charge. Um, I don't think I need another satellite illusion. Do I? Uh, I mean, I don't have other attacks like that right now. It's good. Do I need it? Might be a good backup plan, I suppose. Yeah, we'll take it. Okay, upgrade path. Uh, yeah, it's going to change a little bit here. I wanted to do Witch's Crucible and then Full Moon Howl. I think Fires of Hawkeye is probably the one to do, though. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually take Fires first here. Maybe I'd, I might just not get Witch's Crucible upgraded this round, to be honest. It is still very good, but... I don't know if we're going to get there. Alright, Calm Peace. Does not summon immediately. She has 350 health, <clears throat> so there's quite a lot to chew through. But she does not summon immediately, which I am honestly a little bit surprised at, to be honest. I thought she would. Okay, so let's see what Fires of Hawkeye can do for us here. Random skill, it's Runaway, okay. Um, not really one that I want to use, because discarding the whole hand for two greys, not even good on the first turn, but that's fine. We we can just not use it. Uh, let's go improv, uh, not improv, uh, craft potion. Oh, get that going straight away. It's pretty good. Uh, occult into this one, and now we scry. Devil's Codex is good. All of these are good, actually. Do I have enough to use them? Probably. Get that. Um, so the awkward part about this hand is not having anything that I can immediately, like, remove as far as, like, cards go. I guess I could just burn one of the shadows, but that seems kind of wasteful. Luminous Mushroom is good. I mean, I guess I'm just using this without the full value, but that's fine. Uh, now we can Luminous, get those in deck. Exile with Codex. And generate more black mana, so we can do this bit. Woo. Uh, yeah, this is the fun thing. It's like every card I have basically gets us more cards. So <laughs> it's kind of funny how this is working out. Uh, Alright, from there, Full Moon Howl seems pretty good. Yeah, we'll use that. 
because I might be able to do some more damage this turn. Ah, uh, I mean I can, I just like don't do the charge at that point, which is fine. Let's, let's just do that to get some damage out, and then do I even use the bomb? I kind of want to. Yeah, I probably should. So the logic behind using the bomb here is mostly because now I can recharge it before getting to Junko, in theory. Maybe that's the wrong thing. Also, by the way, on Lunatic, these black butterflies have got 40 barrier. Like, good lord, that's a lot to go with. Uh, we got a full moon howl off a of fire as a Hawkeye. That's really strong. Uh, Alright, start off with Crucible. Get, those, get that in the deck. Yep, full moon howl 100% here. Because look how much damage they're doing otherwise. Like, 9 times 2, 14, 14, uh, 8 times 3. Like, jeez, <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> it's 18 plus 28, so 46 plus 24. Yeah, this fight doesn't mess around on Lunatic. That is 70 damage between all of them. That's almost, that's, that's like most of my life. That's not, that's not good at all. It's still a ton of damage that we've got here. This is still 15 plus 12, 27, 38, 49, even with three firepower down on everything. So it's certainly not a free fight yet. Um, I have enough mana to use that, yeah. The problem with it being random targets, obviously, at this point is that now I kind of don't have full control as to where my stuff is going. So it's very likely, unless we get super lucky, that we are eventually going to end up hitting stuff that does not matter. But let's just see where it goes. Um, I kind of want Stargazer too. What else is in the deck? Ah, uh, Refine... Yeah, 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 I kind of still want Stargazing around. We are getting quite lucky with the, the draws here, to be fair. Uh, yeah, open universe into refine is what we need, so we'll do that. Open universe, refine potion. So we get two of these, so fire four potions into the deck here, and we have one more scry that we can do, so we will do that, and just fire off like every potion we can, basically. Wow, we really did get quite fortunate with most of the targeting here. Yeah, that was very lucky. We can just take her out now. Most of the potions hitting Clown Piece meant that we didn't have too much waste. So, yeah, just take everything out. And we should get more than enough power before the end of this. Chopper is pretty good. That upgrades two random attacks in the library, which the only two attacks we have at the moment, the Satellite Illusion. I should still see what this card is before I take this, because it might be worth... Uh, getting that is another thing, but we get an upgraded cooling agent instead, so as much as I like shade, and fireworks potion's pretty good too. Absolutely, this is what I went into blue mana for in the first place. So yeah, our last two upgradable attacks are both satellite illusion. Kinda glad I took the other one now, because that just means we have more stuff done. Blink Dagger. Oh, <laughs> discard any number of cards at the start of combat. Draw that many. Absolutely. Yes, please. Very, very strong to have here. Our end game is looking really powerful right now. I don't have a ton of money, so I think going for the shop is probably incorrect. I will see what the last event is. Oh, good lord, this fight is rough. Okay. So, they have 70 health each, these guys have got optical camo for 2 turns, 15 defense matrix, <laughs> they're hitting for 40 damage on this opening turn, between the two of them. Uh oh. <laughs> um, Full Moon Howl will put Vulnerable on them, so we might be able to do some good damage with that, but we aren't going to be able to do damage with... Uh... Oh, we aren't going to be able to like beat them up with... Temporary fire down. This is going to be a rough one. Um, I don't think this is enough. <laughs> I'm also wondering if I really have the capacity to use this. 
Oh, this is this is nasty. Uh, if I keep this, at least it's like 27 damage. But we've got to get through 85 health on one of these just to take it out. That's devastating. Uh, might end up using the bomb here, to be honest. I don't want to, but I think we might. Okay, I think we can play the rest of this handout. Luminous Mushroom's a good one to get to. I think we can play the rest of this handout. So let's go alley off into... This might not even be enough, to be honest. Um, If I have Vulnerable, 27, 27... Yeah, that should be reasonable. So, Luminous Mushroom to put two into the deck. Full Moon Howl should get used now. So now we have Vulnerable placed on them. And we'll start seeing what I can draw. Devil's Codex is pretty good. I kind of want all three of these, actually. Yeah, let's just get all three of them as is. Don't think the shoot is good enough here. And then the last one. Oh, the fine part. That's good, too. Okay. From here, we will go hand warmer to draw up. Occult to get more. Cooling Agent is really tempting here too. Bit of a tricky hand to work through. Um, Let's open Universe for Cooling Agent. Puts a bunch of potions into the deck and it makes us do status stuff as well. Next play here, because we need the Occult from here, is going to be, unfortunately, Devil's Codex. I would have liked to have saved that, but we'll exile one of these. Get going with this. Okay. From there, we can use the Occult. <clears throat> and we can... Refine Pot is pretty good. But I do need to... Improv as well here. Product to failure is the obvious play. That's what I wanted to do before using Codex, but I just didn't have the mana for it. So, yeah. Satellite Illusion also makes a lot of sense to do here. Because that gives us another scry. So we get into more potions potentially. Yeah. Do that. Take him out with the cold. That's really good. How many potions do we have in deck? A lot, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a lot of potions. Let's. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's improv. Yeah, the fact of cold gets through uh, optical camo. Very good for us here as well. Right. So from this position, we have two potions left in deck, but we've got five mana to work with for it too, which is pretty solid. I think we want to craft potion. Stick one in deck. We're going to craft the second one as well. Yes, we don't get a lot of card draws off it, but now there are four potions in deck. We're scrying the entirety of the deck. So we can go like this. And take both of them out with the potions. Wow. That was an FTK through one of the most difficult fights that isn't the Luna Bunny specifically because they would have uh, not taken that much damage. That is one of the most difficult fights you can get in this act. And we FTK'd it with this deck. This, this deck is really good. And another alley off. That's going to eat the upgrade. But it's so good for us though. Okay, what was the other thing I wanted to upgrade? Like Witch's Crucible, I guess we're just not upgrading that. Full Moon Howl was the other thing I wanted to do. I think we can afford, I say afford, I think we can get away with not upgrading Full Moon Howl until we get to the very end of this act. 
I'm taking the alley. Uh, emergency defense is decent too, because 28 block is really nice. I'm taking the alley off, and we're upgrading that in this next thing. Oh! Well, it's a dead card, but we get a lot of money from this as well, so negative news, get a ton. Now we actually take the shop, and we might be able to get some really good stuff off of that. So, sure. Take the Kane shop. Put another potion on the ground, apparently. Visionary tuning is pretty neat. I think we want to take the Sutra. Because we have got enough spell charge where we can gain a decent amount of power from that. Visionary tuning is a little expensive, and the mana that it gives us is not the most useful here, to be honest. So, this might be the first time in a while that I've actually just blanked this card. I don't think it's really that important here. The Sutra is good, so we'll take that because I want to be able to use more stuff when I use my bomb. Baskin Stardust would be great if we had just a little bit more to, to do with our charge stuff, but we don't quite. I think we have enough card draw where the supply backpack is not mandatory, but it is also just good to have. Just being able to draw free cards on the dime is good, and applying Vulnerable could be really solid for fighting Sager. These cards don't take up your drawer at the very least, so they are good enough to get. Yeah, we'll, we'll take them both. Don't think anything else is too important here. Mushroom Feast is fun, but not really what we need. Uh, Spirit Assignment, if Sager does the uh, Bow of Light, maybe, but not going to happen guaranteed so we will move on to shiki all right <clears throat> so now i get to see what lunatic marissa is like i didn't fight shiki last time i fought the other two um since we didn't see her dorami has got five like 550 health or something uh 525 i think it was and she's got like 50 barrier to begin with which is kind of insane uh upgraded which is crucible to start with is pretty good so, 14 and 18. 32 damage on the first turn. Good luck. Full Moon Howl might not actually be enough here, but I think we can deal with it. Uh, as weird as it is getting rid of the defense... Uh, well, I mean, it is kind of weird, but I think I will anyway. Because <clears throat> this is a better defense card to get. Ah, oh, sorry for having to move the mic up and stuff. Uh, throat is getting a little bit choked up, and I don't have a ton of uh, orange juice left with me here, so give me a sec. Probably gonna have to crack open another drink before the end of this too. It is fine. Right, how do we deal with this first turn? Uh, first thing to do is which is Crucible. That just makes too much sense. I think the second thing to do is maybe scry for Hand Warmer. Because if we could get Hand Warmer, then we could get to... Uh, this is still good. If we can get to Hand Warmer, then we can get the concentration for Luminous Mushroom to do its work. Ah... Uh... You know what? I'm not too bent out of shape about this being the uh, the setup though, because this also works. Now we have the the charge, so this will still do what it needs to do. The only problem is that I can't codex here after product. It's the same problem as before, where it's like I don't have the mana right now, unless I use the supply backpack which isn't actually that bad of an idea. Uh, Full Moon Howl is going to come out at this point, I think. Yeah, let's do... let's use the Bat Pack then. So we get that, and now we'll just draw free. Because <clears throat> we want to make use of this vulnerable turn, right? Now we can Devil's Codex, get rid of one of the Shadows. And from there, Occult. Uh, Ageless Stream also seems pretty good here. Yeah, let's just go for that. Now we don't take damage guaranteed, even if we somehow get rid of like the rest of our hand here, so that's fine. And also she's vulnerable for a lot longer, which is the main bit. There's the hand warmer that we wanted earlier, but it doesn't actually matter that we didn't get earlier. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have enough black mana with the philosopher stuff, the refined potion's actually good to use now. And hand warmer. 
get bonus damage out of our stuff there. Our hand is too full. <laughs> that happens a lot with this deck, I am noticing. It's not necessarily a bad problem to have, but I am noticing that we are distinctly, like, always kind of full on cards, which is interesting to me. Also, late night, uh, more late night uh, stuff from the outdoors, huh? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> do we actually want that? It's tempting, but I don't think we need it here. Yeah, there's there's been a lot of late night uh, Air Force runs and stuff in the last like few days. They do have to get the night training in as well, so I'm not begrudging anything. Obviously, it just uh, it's interesting. All right, cooling agent coming on in now as well. Astrology can get more potions. Look at this. This is this is what you want out of the deck. There's such a massive amount of power coming out. Goodness. Do we have anything even left in the deck that we want? Satellite Illusion, I suppose. Um, but I don't have enough mana anyway, unless we borrow. We are winning this turn, basically. <laughs> yeah, Satellite Illusion, get that. So we do this. We already do enough damage with the poison to take out uh, our dear friend Cheeky, so we'll just do all of that, and that is enough to take out Marissa as well. Good lord. <laughs> FTK these two as well, huh? <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> well, I know it's not going to go quite as easy for uh, Junko because she's going to purify her mana down, but that's still pretty great, you know? Alright, extra damage, not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, we do have the Sutra, so we can get more mana against Shiki. Not Shiki, Junko. Stargazing, huh? It retains. It's pretty good. We'll, we'll take it. All of the scry, basically. And then our final upgrade, there's really not a lot to upgrade here, but now we can get away with doing Full Moon Howl. Yes. Okay, Junko time! Let's see what she does. 550 health, she still only purifies one. I was kind of worried that she was going to purify two. Uh, obviously do not need negative news. She also doesn't start the battle with her spell. I was kind of thinking she might have, so... These are all very positive traits right now. We don't need any block. <clears throat> do we need stargazing? Probably not. Let's just draw a little bit further in. Ooh, a fine pot from the word go, huh? I'm okay with that. Yeah, let's let's fire that immediately. Now, because of the way Purify stuff works, I am going to have to use this uh, Black Mana quickly. So, let's do that. We can fire as a Hawkeye here. if I do it now. Alternatively, if I use the Oko, then I could maybe craft pot or something. If I, I have to fire now if I want to do it. Yeah, let's do it now. Ooh, Yuka Ono Visitation's actually not terrible as a random one. Apply cold twice. That's respectable. Right. Um... Yeah, so we're just going to fire that immediately. So it gets 27 damage, basically, for, for one mana. That's pretty good. Um, product is not going to be usable here. Neither really is improv. Uh, product would be usable if I use my bomb in turn one. Which I guess I could. But I think we're just going to remove that for now. Uh, Alioth is going to give us a bit more... Luminous Mushroom is actually a really good one to, to get from that. We'll just use that. And see what else we can do. There's Hand Warmer. Okay, Borrow Materials is good to get because then I can I can actually make use of that. So Hand Warmer. Borrow Materials. Um, Probably want to use the Occult to do that, actually. Because that's not going to be as useful 
uh, as the rainbows are. So we'll do that. Now comes the question of which one of these do I want to use from here. Probably Satellite Illusion. And we'll... Don't really care for any of them, to be honest. Um, don't know if I care for, like, that either. I suppose it'd probably be good. We just get Open Universe. Yeah. Open Universe for Cooling Agent. And that lets me just get a ton more stuff in deck. And we have enough mana left for Satellite Illusion. That seems like a good ending spot. Okay, what's your spell card like on Lunatic? Five! Five pure radiance. Holy, okay. That's terrifying. Wowzers. Alright. Uh well, which is crucible going on in. Also eight by six, by the way. Uh forty-eight damage for her opener attack. Can't believe she does five of them. That's wild. Whatever. Product of failure going on in. Uh, this is the turn to use the bomb, because we're going to get full charge after this anyway. Get ourselves some extra mana as well, because we're going to want that this turn. And uh, fire away. Boop. Boop. <laughs> Boop. Oh man, so much damage. Uh, okay, Full Moon Howl, just to weaken her even further. It did not go to 3 times 6 because weaken happens after the power down, I think. So, yeah. Anyway, 8 cards left, 5 of them are potions. This is the perfect time for stargazing. Um, I kind of want to use that one, actually. <laughs> so, we'll do that. Boop. Boop. Pretty sure she's dead anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yep. <laughs> yeah, if I wasn't using Marissa. But this is why I do use Marissa, though, because Marissa to me is just the most fun. But also, just in general, one of the strongest types to shot types to have. Um. Okay, so this is a case when a Miracle Mallet could actually be pretty fun because we do actually have uh, lots of good stuff on our basic attacks, because we kept them all, and we got them upgraded by Sukuna. So if we deliberately spent the colorless mana on... We'd have to be careful about what we're spending when, but if we deliberately spent the colorless mana on the uh, basic hits, then they would do... Basically, our illusion laser would do four times damage at that point. We have just a knife as well, so without vulnerable, our basic laser would suddenly be doing 18 times 4, so like 72 damage. That's kind of absurd. I also just kind of I also just want bottled soul for the extra black mana though. Uh it's nice to have the gun near too, making all of your attacks accurate, but Sager doesn't do grace. At least not that I've seen, so uh yeah. This is really fun, but I think it's best that we just take the, the black mana here. It's a bit of a shame not to be able to use our bomb, I guess, for the rest of it, but realistically, we've already got everything we can out of our bomb. It's going to be fine. That's not a lot of money for the final shot there, by the way. Oh, this got buffed, actually. Um, I don't know why. It was already really good. But uh, yeah, for each mana spent, deal six. It used to do five. When you upgrade it, it does nine. It used to do seven. So yeah, this got buffed in the most recent like, minor update. Super cool card. Not really one we're going to use here. Red Giant Impact is pretty reasonable. Like, it does a pretty good amount of damage, and we do have two alley offs, so we are getting charge a little bit. So we could get that flame added. Get some more mana off of it. That is not terrible. But it's also not what we need, so we are going to skip here. I think you, you could take it if you wanted, but I don't think it's worth the inconsistency. <sighs> this is a bit of a sad state of affairs for the final shop, to be honest. Uh, not really anything that I want here. 
and I don't have enough money to get an upgrade and the uh, ba uh, bass drum. I think the reasonable thing to do here is to take the violin solo, probably take the canned food, and take a card upgrade. Those are possible. It is also maybe reasonable to take beer for the uh, firepower, and we can still take a card upgrade. That's all, that's actually not bad. Let's do that. Uh, we could remove too, but I don't think there's anything I need to remove at this point since we got rid of Fluorescent Forest and uh, True Full Moon before. I think everything else is fine. What we want is to upgrade Ageless Dream and Witch's Crucible. We want the two of those upgraded. So, because Ageless Dream, we start with it, and that means we can put the Vulnerable on immediately, which is amazing. And then Witch's Crucible, we want upgraded to put the second potion in deck which is something we just haven't had right now. Again, Refined Potion's a decent upgrade, but it's not mandatory, because most of the time our potions are not sticking around in the uh, discard, or in the deck, so like they're not gonna get benefits from the overtime effect. So, here's the big thing that Sager does. Uh, thankfully, it's the probably the, the easiest one to deal with initially, although it might mess our potion stuff up a bit. Here's the big thing that Sager does immediately. On Lunatic, she skips her first turn, which means she actually immediately has a, a thing down and she goes into her attack immediately as well. So she's doing 5 times 8 here, right out of the gate. Uh, if it's one, uh, like, she doesn't gain bonus effects off the stuff of it here, so she's not gaining uh, the summon immediately, and she wouldn't put status on you, I guess, with the teapot. But yeah, instantly she she is a turn ahead from where she is on hard. That's the major difference here. As a result, this might end up being a bit more difficult. I do have open universe immediately, which is fantastic. Also, just like on hard mode, if you missed yesterday's one, or like the last, not yesterday's, but the last uh, thing with Sakia, each, each card that you play deals two damage to you. And she also has just uh, 999 health as well. So, yeah, keep these in mind as we go on, because this is this is not a, an easy fight as a result. Okay, so the obvious thing we want to do is Ageless Dream. We do want to get that vulnerable and weaken down. It only weakens her by one, which is kind of annoying, but that's fine. Uh, Open Universe is going to get played on Cooling Agent here. Makes the most sense? Refine Potion actually makes a lot of sense too, because it gives them much more firepower. Yeah, we'll do Refine Potion, it's more expensive as well, so that's a, that's a good one to do. So we'll do that. And now that's all of our initial block down. So I will be taking some damage here, which is not amazing, but we'll survive. In a block. Full Moon Howl puts it down to basically nothing at this point, which is really good. Thankfully. And from here, let's do some damage. So, we really want to take her out as fast as possible here, so, damage is important to say the least. I kind of want products, but I also want Alley Off, so, we will do it this way. Gonna use. Uh, I should have done the firepower at the start of the turn if I was gonna do this, but we're gonna do this now so I can use the bomb and get my mana. Get enough mana to do product to failure is the idea, and now we can. Probably we could just leave the turn at this, but I'm a little bit worried about over over damaging. So maybe I should leave the turn at this? Yeah, I'm gonna leave the turn at this, I think. So we've managed to lower her output a ton this first turn. Now the problem is she does have summons around, so it could make things a little bit harder to target. But I think we can still manage it. Uh, gonna eat a little bit of damage initially here so we can uh, get the cooling agent going, and let's draw. Yep. 
take him out. Now, the one thing about taking the Bottle Soul is we don't get any extra power here for the rest of this, but honestly, that doesn't matter too much because we weren't going to get to another bomb regardless of what we did, so I don't think that's too much of a detriment here. I'm going to shoot Fire Pfizer Hawkeye off here because, yeah, this actually could end up being super good. Um, and I, I want to use it here initially, I think. Hand Warmer is really good, but we have too many cards in hand for that. So we're going to skip for now. Um, Devil's Codex is good. Luminous Mushroom is good. We do have Charge. Illusion Laser probably don't need right now, so let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So Codex, exile this. Gets rid of that. And we can Luminous into Crucible. Got loads of Scry cards around as well, so we can still do some fun work with that. Borrow Materials is good for next turn. We'll, we'll get that going. Oh yeah, gotta use this first and then get that going. Now, uh, Alley off for the charge. just going to be how much damage can she still take. 26, so not a lot. We probably don't want to go any further this turn. So let's, even though I have this in hand, let's not. Uh, we'll just cap out the damage with this. Going to take a fair bit this turn. Like, we're taking 18, so that is a decent amount, but it's fine. Yeah, because the potion's just going to take her out. We do get some poison on this as well now. Five poison, to be exact, so that's kind of rough, but it's okay, because she's not attacking us this turn. So, yeah, look how much we've already dealt here. That's pretty impressive. Uh, so we'll get some block. We'll do some scrying. I mean, sure. <laughs> Could be useful for, for the next bit. Ah, getting a shadow is kind of annoying. Gonna take some more damage here, but it is what it is. Luminous Mushroom is really good. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll take that. Get the block, get the potions in the deck. We're gonna need to use that Scry 7 here, so let's just get a little bit of damage out and hope it's a good one. I mean, that's pretty solid. I think I kind of like all of these, actually. So let's just take them all as is. And... Yeah, not really any reason to deviate right now. We'll gain extra block for the, the paint. And exile the shadow. Hand warmer for the drawer. Product is the final thing. We have enough damage dealt that we don't have to worry about it here. Yeah, we'll just leave it. She's going to remove the vulnerable from herself this turn. Oh, that's the one that I didn't want to see. Oh, God. The pyramid is the only one that I didn't want to see because I rely on drawing a lot of cards and she has just ruined that. Uh-oh. Okay, we can still win this. It's just going to take, like, more turns than I wanted now. And that might be problematic. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, okay, Full Moon Howling should come out first, 100%. Uh, I think I need to put the defense up before I take too much extra damage here. Let's... Take out the summon. Feels bad, but probably correct. Go ahead and draw more potions. So we can only draw one more card is the problem here. So whatever we get, it's got to be good. So I think we need to start gazing.
into Full Moon Howl. That really sucks, but like, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do with it. She isn't doing damage to us anymore though, that's good, right? We can still laser. And I guess I take the charge, if nothing else. Okay. Yeah, it is so frustrating to basically have the game on lock and then she's like, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the exact one thing that hard counters you. <laughs> I'm just gonna do that because nuts to you, right? Ah, oh, so irritating. At least she's got a lot of vulnerable on her at this point, so hopefully we can work with that. Um, so we'll go here. Another Full Moon Howl is really good. So do that. Because it just makes everything so much more manageable here. 23 times 2 is still an awful lot, so... Um, we want to scry again. I think... Oh, I'll probably need to just do that. Seems pretty bad, but... There's a potion. Could be good. Yep, hits her. Orthodox Rebellion is good to get more defense. I think if I just use my bomb on her, we win. So, let's do that. Yeah, 48 into 15. That does just win. Woof! So it ended up working out, but it did cost us another turn, which was <laughs> potentially very scary. Alrighty, and that is Lunatic Mode. Two bosses defeated without taking damage, pretty respectable. And uh, we had, I guess, a decent number of cards in deck, sure. You get 1.5 times bonus for your score for beating Lunatic, which is, I guess, cool if you like the score stuff. And yeah, at least this one finished a lot better than the original Marissa A run did, because that one I just ran out of potions to use because all of my potion stuff was ability based. Here we only had a couple of ability based ones, and the rest of it was all on the uh, other side. So yeah, we'll check out the run history. We had a cup, you know, like quite a few, like two craft potion. We had the uh, luminous mushroom this time, which was really, really solid. Uh, to get extra potions. A couple of ways of uh, getting charged to get that too. You don't need to go into burst mode with this Marissa, although it's nice if you can. Most of the time that's going to happen via radioactive elements though. But if you don't get it, it's fine, but it is really good to have a couple of alley off because it works so well with Luminous Mushroom. So yeah, and alley off in general is just a decent card. It does need to be upgraded in order for it to be good, but that's still perfectly fine. And yeah, maybe not the most concise deck that we could have had for it, but we had a couple of things at the end that uh, we really didn't necessarily need, I suppose. Pfizer Hawkeye was more just interesting than anything. I don't think we actually got to use it that much, in, even in the last fight, because I, over, I overdrew a little bit, but that's fine. Very cool deck nonetheless, and glad that we managed to make it through. That is Lunatic Mode, and you might be seeing why I'm not a huge fan of it in comparison. Most of it is because of the fact that you just can't really avoid taking damage. Uh, some can, like Reimu maybe can, Cherno possibly can if you get a ton of frost armor, but in general I feel like you just can't avoid taking hits in this mode. And I like the puzzle aspect of the game of going, okay, how do I not take damage this turn, right? And yeah, health as a resource is a thing that is neat and all, but I, I don't know. I just, because the thing is, the more fights and stuff you introduce where it's like, I cannot avoid taking damage, the more it ends up becoming a, do I get enough lucky fights in a row where I don't take damage, right? Or, and we haven't, we still haven't seen the likes of Tenchi. I haven't fought Tenchi or Megumu yet in Act 2. And those those two are typically pretty hard hitting on uh, lower difficulties. So here with stronger status, especially Tenchi. I know for a fact Tenchi heals 5 every time you hit her. Which is just unbelievably stupid. So 
yeah, there's a lot of things I don't really care for when it comes to the balance of Lunatic. I think it's a little bit overtuned in a lot of places for my own personal enjoyment of the game. But if you really like it, and I know a lot of people do, because uh, a lot of people do like attempt the so-called L7 as it is, because they, they go for the request down here as well, uh, this, this actually does show up as a thing too, it's like each of these you get a number for it, so if you take on all the requests at the same time then it's the, the X7 run, right? And a lot of people will take on uh, Lunatic with all the requests on. And they're nuts! Because, but then again, not every, not every run is supposed to be successful on the higher difficulties apparently. I don't personally agree with that as a thing, so that's why I don't care for it as much. If you've listened to all the rant here though, thank you very much for watching. I don't know what I'm going to do next on here. There are some Jadebox runs and stuff I could still do. There's a few things in there that I haven't run with. Most of them I haven't know, ones I don't like, so I don't know if we'll do that. But uh, I still haven't managed to... I haven't like played Exhibit Switch runs and stuff to, to get into the uh, blank card run. Still don't have a seed for that, so... Don't know if that's going to be possible. I don't know if an old I don't know if an old seed would even work, but even if it does, I don't remember if I have. <laughs> I'd have to look back in the Discord because I think I might have a blank seed run from about 12 versions ago. That maybe that could still work. It probably won't though. So, because I think the the seeds will probably have gone too far from then. There's been new events and stuff added since I played that one. Yeah, I don't know what else I can really do with it. I mean, I guess we could maybe take on some of the request stuff. I haven't done any of those yet, so I suppose there is that, but they're just like added challenges that I don't especially care for. Like, if we show them off real quick. Uh, begin with an eviction order in the deck is fine, that's that's whatever. Uh, pills are half, half as effective and max life is reduced by 10, like, okay, sure, I suppose. Um, gold power and life gained after bosses reduced by half. Yeah, alright, I mean, me maybe you don't use a bomb on every boss or something at that point, okay. Uh, half as likely to find upgraded cards, okay, sure. Maximum spell card capacity reduced by one is a bit of a dick move, <laughs> but yeah, there is that. Upgrading uh, non-basic cards at gaps takes extra money, so yeah, all of the, the cost-based stuff. And the Long Night is the crazy one. The I don't know about that. Uh, makes your first card each game, uh, each like fight, cost more mana. And the further in you go, the more that it makes it cost up. I don't have those cards available in the collection to show, so maybe that's a thing. I don't know. Super long ramble aside at the end here. I do hope this run was enjoyable. This isn't the end for the game. I just don't know exactly what else I want to do yet. So if you have managed to make it through all of this, do let me know if there's something you would like to see uh, within my power, within the game, and uh, we'll try and make it happen. Till then, thank you very much for watching, and take care of yourselves.